if you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, you're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. Hey friends, Shane from HowToRinch.com and know I've been gone for quite some time. You guys uh, did a great job of supporting that first video as I got back from Japan after a long two-month stint. And I wanted to make sure and remind people that in that video, do not forget to be a channel member and sign up to win one of these testers for free. So I want to give that little shout out for that. Cool tool, great video. Thanks for all the support on that. But what I want to do in this video is I'm prepping the, the work area for... A, a buddy coming in, we're going to do his uh, KX250 motor, and I don't do a lot of two-stroke content. My stuff that's on there is, is super thorough, but it's really old. Uh, it was filmed, uh, geez, probably like 10 years ago, so nothing's changed on it, but there are some uh, slightly better tools and uh, just ways I've learned to do things. So what I was going to do in this video is just kind of get you thinking about, like, what does it look like to uh, rebuild a two-stroke motor? and a, a single cylinder two-stroke motor to be more specific but many of these tools are used for uh multi-cylinder two-strokes and they're used for four-stroke singles with vertically split uh crankcases as well but i thought i'd have some fun with this and what i'm going to do is i'm put a challenge question at the end of this video i've purposely left out two tools so there's two tools that i use every single time i do both the two-stroke and four-stroke engine but in particular, I'm going to need them tomorrow when we build this motor uh, for our pal over uh, at Lethal Leathers, actually. Another Instagram. You should check out his channel. I'll put links and stuff below, too. But anyway, we uh, I left two tools out that I use and that I think you need every single time. So I want to challenge people to go to the, uh, the member-only video. There's also going to be a link below where I'm going to disclose those tools. And anybody else that's not a member and you're just in here checking things out, that's cool. Appreciate you stopping by. Uh, if you want to have fun and put something in the comments of uh, what tools you think are missing after seeing everything that we laid out, um, go for it. And I'm going to love it. I'm going to see if anybody thought of something that you would need, uh, KX250, and uh, that I didn't think to put it out ahead of time. Now, there's there's uh, some stuff like I left out, you know, the common well, let, let me get into the tools that I, I have here. But if you see something like, oh, man, it's two-stroke. I know before I'd even put a wrench on that motor, I would need this tool as well. And this is something you would need to rebuild it. Put it below in the comments. All right, my friends, let's uh, get at it and check out what tools are my 100% grab-and-go to do one of these motors. We'll start off with some really simple stuff as far as the preparation, and that's I want to be ready with uh, parts bins to put stuff in. If anybody's been uh, you know, a member of the channel for a long time, you'll see I'm pretty particular about uh, keeping parts together like all the clutch stuff is together, and I don't mix up like the stator or the left side components in a, in a tote. Whether you use baggies, use these little totes from like the dollar store, Walmarts, and, and what have you, they're super slick. So I will keep like uh, components together, meaning like all the clutch stuff. Uh, or I will also, as you can see, some of the other workbenches here where stuff will be laid uh, as I work on something. It'll be on the left side or right side of the engine, whichever which, whichever side that is. So that makes it really handy. Uh, these are really super cool if you're going right back together with the motor as we intend to. He's got all new bearings and seals and piston and whatnot. Uh, and it's not a, a bike that was broke. He caught it in time to where we're doing the work and we can go back together in the same day. So fun stuff. Um, obviously, you're going to need some screwdrivers. I just grabbed uh, the common number two and three uh, that we're going to use a lot on Japanese motorcycles. They're not JS screwdrivers. It's funny. I actually bought a set to do uh, start doing videos on. <laughs> I bought these so long ago. And I still have not pulled them out. Shame on me. But I know people are going to make a huge deal about not being a JS screwdriver. So video's coming. These things are super sick. They're impact screwdrivers too. Can't wait to use them. I've actually got about a whole bunch of them. Should have just gotten ready for this video, huh? But what else do I have on the bench? I talked about prep and getting ready, so I think I'll jump into 
the boxes. So pretty popular thing, take some uh, two by fours and make up a box. I'm not really sure in this KX which one's gonna be the one I wanna use. So I'm just grabbing a couple of my, my favorite go-tos. I could tell because how much oil and crap is on them. So this gives you a nice place to set <clears throat> those aluminum cases on so that you aren't hurting them. Uh, and why dig into your nice workbench top when you can uh, do it on a sacrificial two by four like that. So as we go along, uh, funny enough, music, that's going to be important. Uh, I am in love with this guy for uh, removal. Uh, once I break something loose or whatnot, this is definitely making it a uh, really fast work of that. Um, a little DeWalt here. And then uh, with that, I can put my adapter. So I can go to sockets as needed. I just threw some out. And then, of course, grabbing uh, some ratchets. And then my favorite two extensions. I'm always going to grab a three. And I think this is what a uh, – this might be a six. Let's see. Don't even know. I just grab it so much. Looking at the part number, and I'm not seeing – not seeing a reference on there anyway but positive that's my six so this will get me far enough away from whatever if i don't want to lose skin on my knuckles or i need to be careful not to swing and hit something uh else on whatever i'm working on so those are my like just grab them and go to work ratchet and uh, extensions for three eights you're gonna see here i've got a bunch of quarter stuff uh, laid out when i'm working on japanese mercos it's really common for me to want to use my uh, quarter inch drive stuff. And I think this is super important on assembly is people just get way too carried away of, of grabbing their big tools and stripping small fasteners. So I'm a huge fan of this. And then what's really become my favorite little wrench, it's nothing expensive. I got this at an AutoZone. I can't think what the brand is. It's, um, it's shockingly good quality. Uh, I've been really happy with this, but I love that it just flips around so easy so I can go straight and I can go in there and really ratchet something off really fast just by spinning it that way. Uh, it's cool. I really, really, really am in love with this little guy. I've got one in a 3H drive over there, but I'm using this more for like, let's get the bolt started. Let's make sure everything is good to go. Son of a monkey. I just thought of a third tool that I don't have out. I'm going to put it in the other pile for the other video. So, see, I'm already thinking of stuff. Uh, and then uh, I've got all my different extensions. They happen to live right there. That's why I didn't pull out like a couple of the popular sizes. But my go-tos are for surely uh, not going to be that little change W1. I can't think of where I hardly use that, but I use these two a lot. Okay, as far as preparation goes, uh, Chemicals, of course, there's uh, anti-seize. I can't think of what I'll use that on the motor, but I have uh, greases over there, uh, thread locker, of course, some W40, some brake cleaner, things like that. And, and I'm going to take the motor to a you know our professional parts washer, so I'm not counting on that stuff being on the bench. Um, let's see what else. This little guy I have just setting out, um, waiting. Uh, somehow my tool for torquing the cylinder heads down, which you need on a two-stroke, there'll be an, a drive right here, and this allows you to get into that unaccessible bolt uh, inside every two-stroke cylinder that you can't get with a regular wrench and then do a proper torque wrench on there. So I don't know if my one walked away, grew legs or something, but just in case tomorrow it doesn't make it, I'm going to make one. They're actually pretty easy to do. You can just cut a socket off in half and weld it there and then take the drive side of it, weld it to the middle. And uh, most uh, most everything is either a 12 or a 14 millimeter. So I've just got a couple sockets waiting and ready to go just in case I need to make it. No big deal. Uh, heat gun. I'm just about going right past it. Obviously going to need to heat stuff up to be able to get bearings uh, out and in. Uh, uh, Mighty Vac tool I use for testing the crankcase. Talk about that a little bit more later. Just, just checking our work. That's what I'm, you know, doing there. Obviously, pins and paper. Uh, a caliper to measure things as needed. And inside of here, if you haven't seen my, my holy grail uh, video list on two strokes, there's like I don't know, 100 videos in there. Um, I show how I do transmissions. And if you watch those videos, you're going to see why I've taken one of these standard six inch rules and cut it down to four inches and how I use that to uh, set the bearing uh, depth and verify uh, if shims are needed or not needed and so on. Now, you might laugh if it's a Japanese bike because you shouldn't have to be shimming it. This would be more of 
um, har old, old Harleys, British bikes, and so on, where we actually have to uh, shim the transmission. But the reason I say I always do this on a Japanese bike, and like I said, it's in-depth in that other video, is that I still want to know that it's right. If I do this whole test like I do with this ruler and it uh, is off, that would tell me that I have some other problem. Maybe you have dirt that's under the bearing and the bearing didn't fully seat. Uh, maybe I'm missing a shim and that really gets me going to the uh, parts fish to make sure that uh, – that I have what I need. I should already know it at that point, but this is, uh, this is like I said, the tool I use to determine that. Um, these I, I don't typically use anymore. They're kind of cool. What this does is it goes around the connecting rod. This one is a just a, an adjustable one, if you will. So the connecting rod sits here, and then the, the piston would still be on in this point. And then the piston sits on this. You can actually see the dig marks of pistons from over the year of this homemade wooden one that I have. And I'll tell you why I don't really use this anymore is because I just have a different method for taking the engine apart where I don't need this. And I think my method's way more legit. I've got videos on that on uh, uh, on my two-stroke stuff, of course. And I'll probably be making a lot of content with my pal on this too. But um, the reason you absolutely would have to have this tool is if you were working on motors someone else took apart and they took the cylinder off. Uh, let's just go look at my cutaway quick. If someone took the uh, jug off, I walked over here earlier to show you where that one bolt would go for the, the fastener you can't access on the cylinder, and it's on my cutaway. It's the one that I happened to cut off. So trust me, there's one right here you can't get to. But that tool that I was just showing you would go across the base of the cases, and then the piston would sit down on it. And the reason you would need that tool is if you take apart a two-stroke motor according to the way the service manual says to do it, you're going to need that tool so that you can get the nut off of either side of the crankshafts to work to get the rotor off and whatnot. Now, I take it apart differently where I don't need that tool, but there you go. Uh, typically, per a service manual, that's what you would need for a two-stroke. I think my trick's pretty cool. You should check out my videos. should be a member. should join. Hint, hint. All right, let's keep going. And yes, the shop is a super mess right now. Just getting back after two months of living in Japan, training techs over there. Epic experiences. I'll probably do a rundown whenever I can on that. All right, what else? Uh, a little clipboard with a calculator. Okay, might have to do some math. I've uh, got a couple torque wrenches. One of the big reasons I have to do the math is a lot of times they give us on older, ma older manuals, they only give us a foot-pound torque, uh, torque spec like this. And uh, I'm always grabbing, like this is my most popular torque wrench on Japanese motorcycles, and I'm going to convert inch pounds to uh, foot pounds to inch pounds because this torque wrench is most is most likely more accurate in the areas that we torque these smaller fasteners to. This is more for axles, clutch hub nuts, primary you know uh, drive gears, things like that. Um, and people always grab this big one. Because it goes all the way down to 20. Well, if you have to torque, I got whole videos on this, but real quick, if you have to torque in the bottom one third, so let's say just do easy math, you have uh, zero to 100 foot pounds, right? No torque wrench starts at zero, by the way. Uh, they're always like this. 20 to 100, but I'm going to do easy math here. So with the easy math example, 0 to 100, that means the first 33 foot-pounds is the third, and then 34 to 66 uh, is the second, and then 67 to 100 would be the third, right? Torque wrenches are most accurate in the middle third of whatever their range is, okay? So between this 20 to 100, if you divide out the math of that, you take that, that 80 foot-pounds of adjustment, uh, or calibrated use, and you divide that out into three, you'd figure out the middle third of that is where it's most accurate, okay? So if I'm torquing small fasteners, I'm never in this 20 range. I'm more in like that eight, nine, 10, you know, foot-pound range. Uh, I wouldn't want to be all the way at the end of a scale either. So I'm, I'm trying to target and aim at the middle of that. That's why torque wrenches have multiple ones of them. I kind of got a few. I've got all different small ones, big ones, half inch, digital, you name it. Um, you need to know what you what you need to have. Okay, keep on moving on the list. I got some magnets. Uh, my drop something. Have my little uh, pick sets for cotter keys or O-rings or whatnot. We definitely will have some transmission O-rings on there that we need to take off, especially when we're on the counter shaft sale on a two-stroke. 
Uh, bearing driver uh, kit. Love this thing. Got great videos on this and how we use this to uh, uh, remove and, in, or excuse me, to install bearings and seals. So it's, use this as a seal driver as well. Uh, you can tell that is a popular one because it's got the witness mark of my electrical tape, which is my little trick of how I use it. Watch the full videos. Snap ring pliers, uh, quite often around transmission gears, especially uh, dirt bikes where they have a kicker. You almost always have a snap ring uh, on the idler gear and around the uh, transmission there. So might need that. If I were disassembling the transmission, I would also need this guy. This is a pair of uh, expanding it, it, it's a snap ring removal tool kit, but as you can see, when I open those, they expand on the same plane. They don't arch out like, like this where they arch at an angle so they're not sweeping apart. This one is specifically for transmissions so that it opens the snap ring evenly and then takes off. It's not only safe, it's super crucial for installation so you're not stretching uh, a brand new snap ring beyond uh, its limit right away on the get-go. If you don't know about that, don't be touched with transmissions or get the right training. That's a big deal. Um, next, we have a rotor puller kit. Um, about 99% sure all I need is this one. This is like my go-to uh, metric Japanese motorcycle one. But just in case, I grab the whole kit, which is these and more. So that's what that is. And I got, I got, oh, I can put links to all this stuff um, as well so that you can easily access it too. I see a tool lot here. My, my old uh, business partner at Susie Power Sports, he shipped this out to me quick. I don't do uh, enough two strokes or one to buy this thing. I'm kind of shocked at how much the price has come down. I think when I was used to buying them, they were 300 bucks. I saw they were down to about 150. But what this does is when you're putting the cases back together, it allows the connecting rod to fit inside here. You go down in between the webs of the crank and you install your crank cases. And what this does is prevents the crankshaft from getting out of true. You say, well, Shane, does it matter if you do one or 100 motors? Wouldn't you need that? The only time I need this is on a Kawasaki. And I'll explain why when I do the actual motor and why this is really crucial on the Kawi. On all the Honda Suzuki, you name it, I can get the motor together uh, using heat and I can get it assembled without any fear of the crankshaft become, uh, becoming out of true. Can't do it on the Kawasaki's. So I'll explain why in some other videos. Okay, what do I got next? I've got, obviously, you're going to need to smack some stuff. Got ball peen, which I will commonly use with uh, the Impact uh, Driver Toolkit. This is by far my favorite, 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 favorite uh tool accessory that I use when disassembling because you should have crazy amounts of thread locker on the transmission and shift drum uh pieces in there i should expect to see those is this a number three boy my eyesight is getting cruddy I broke my snap on number three. This is making me wonder if I need to run out. I think that's a number two. It is a number two. So here's a three. Number three. Okay. Need to make sure I had one. I'm going to need it for tomorrow because I still haven't got my snap on one warrantied. Okay. Uh, what do I got next? Um, this is a uh, crank case uh, splitter tool. This is just going to be essential. It's the only way you're getting those cases apart without breaking them. If you do not have this tool, you're going to break stuff. Um, this guy is my k &L brand, uh, crankshaft puller. This will pull the crankshaft into the case once you've removed it. And you got a couple different little adapters. I've had this thing forever. So, I mean, this is kind of like my go-to, but I did a product review for Tusk, uh, a while back and I have their version of this and it works great. It does exactly the same thing. It's a, a great price point if you haven't seen Tusk Tools, they're freaking awesome. Um, and high quality, I'm super happy with those. But that's what these tools do is they pull the crankcase, the crankshaft into one crankcase and you, then you drop your training in, then you get ready to pull the other case on. So, uh, Kawasaki's, I think it's in here. And I'm not going to open that right now. They have a different adapter. So when you do a Kawasaki to uh, pull it on. What else? These are just some pieces for that. Good old-fashioned T-handles. I happen to have a uh, number two and number three Phillips handy. And then eight and ten uh, 
T-handles, uh, of course, going to use them like crazy. So earlier I was talking about the Mighty Vac and how it's going to be able to test my work. So this is a manifold I just made for a, uh, an RM85 that I just did, a bunch of content on whatnot. I still got to produce. But um, we're going to do the same thing on this KX. And what this allows us to do is test our work. So we're going to build the motor and then pressurize it and pull a vacuum and prove that the crank seals hold, the crank case gasket holds, the head gasket holds, the whole nine yards. And that's what that is for. This thing's really cool. It's a gear jammer. Uh, I got this at Suzuki when I worked there. They had made these where they just took an old you know, gear and then welded it to an old transmission collar. And, uh, um, or no, I'm sorry, on this one, they just took a gear that they cut. This was one piece. And basically what you do is you put this between two gears, like the primary, the crankshaft, and the clutch basket, and that locks it so that you can hold it in place to actually torque it to specification. You may have seen in other videos, I use a thing by Motion Pro called a gear jammer. Works great. No doubt about it, but aluminum, they, they, uh, you have to be really careful what you're doing or you'll just break the tool. And then if you leave a little piece in the motor, it makes a nightmare. I've got a video on that. Um, the other thing people use are a penny. Um, still have to be careful with those. I've had pennies go all the way through, you know, push itself all the way out and not torque. So something like this is pretty sweet. Thank you to my pals when I worked at Suzuki USA. Uh, another couple uh, tools here. This is a clutch holder. So this holds the clutch basket so you could torque the uh, hub nut. Um, this one here is a rotor holder. I'm not sure if I'll need it on this motor, but I just have it out and ready to go. And this will hold like the ignition rotor. You might have holes that are in there so that you can then untorque it uh, properly. Uh, realistically, though, all you need is an impact. You know what? And I thought of a couple of tools that I had set out. I set out what I call... My big Bertha here. This is uh, my half inch impact by Mac. Uh, this thing's awesome. I think they called it, uh, I don't remember what the marketing name was on this one, but love this thing. I finally replaced the one I had for like 15 years. You know, probably could have just rebuilt it, but I got a great deal from uh, Scott over at uh, Mac Tool Distributor that I had locally, and, and uh, I couldn't say no. So love this flexible lead that we put on it as well. Um, my half inch sockets just specifically for, uh, the rotor. Um, these are all metric. Got these from Scott too. They were, uh, what was the brand on this? They were just such a smoke and deal expert. Um, it's just a great deal. I got SAE and, uh, metric on this. The, uh, so the, what I'm going to use these on are like a counter shaft nut, uh, for the sprocket, I'll use it on the ignition rotor and I'll use it on the clutch hub basket and I'll use it on the primary drive gear. So on removal, I can yank all of those off with an impact. On installation is where you're going to have to have holding tools so that you can properly use a torque wrench to specification. Big difference. You're taking it apart or putting it together. Um, I got some gloves. Um, I'm not a big fan of these mechanics gloves, uh, but my buddy coming, I don't know if he is. I just, I have a hard time getting the feel I want with those, but I got them out ready to go. But sometimes lifting stuff, I'll grab those. Uh, razor blades and steel wool for some like cleaning and prepping of the cases. Uh, greases, I said cleaner. Uh, just said tea handles that just sit on the bench. Uh, safety glasses. Got my Radian anti-fog safety glasses in there. So y'all don't think I'm not working safe. And then uh, the workspace itself. I mean, a flashlight, something you got to have. It's nice that I get a vice here or whatnot. But these are the tools that I use and I know I'm going to need to go so that tomorrow when he gets here, we can start going boom and start, uh, you know, throwing wrenches and making stuff happen and getting it apart. So that is what I got. So here's here's my challenge to you. Whether you're a channel member or not, we'd love to hear your comments and say, what what I forget? You know, I told you I purposely left two and I'm changing that to three. I thought of something as I was going here. Uh, and I, I purposely uh, left those out for a member video. And I'm going to go into a little bit deeper dive on some of that stuff and just have some fun. Thank them for some other things. But uh, I'd love to see the comments below because eventually, like in a week or two, I'll come back and I'll comment on anything anybody put in here 
uh, as, as far as what did I forget or what did I miss? So it's a, definitely a community here where we all like helping each other. I hope you found something uh, cool and useful out of uh, this video as far as like, you know, getting ready for a job. You know, what does it look like? What, what are the tools? Maybe you're just considering building your two-stroke motor and you're thinking, what does it really take to do that? Well, it takes a lot of tools. I mean, there's a lot here, and this doesn't include the parts washers and, and everything else that go with it. So uh, can you do it? Absolutely. Everything here can be used at home. Uh, you know, as far as like the shop, you know, I talked about, you know, the vice. Uh, for really a two-stroke motor, I can't think where I really need that much. Um, but there's a couple other tools to do uh, the motor, uh you know, with a lot more efficiency, right? So I've got an airline waiting right here if I need it. But the other thing is I'm going to press the bearings in and out uh, using either my Arbor press or my hydraulic press, just which is whichever is more convenient. So there'd be a little more cost than that, but maybe it's a deal where you just get it apart. You take it to your, you know, your local friendly shop or your buddy that's got a press and you have them do that last little bit. You know, you can, like I said, though, on most two strokes, uh, and four stroke vertically split cases, you can heat it up enough to where then you can just uh, drive it out with some tools like this, you know, some big hammers, or you could even use, you know, like really large sockets that would, uh, you know, fit up against that bearing. More than one ways to do this for sure. So, all right, my friends, if you haven't done so yet, this is kind of a long one, just talking about a bunch of tools. So if you haven't done so yet, please uh, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And if you're a member, head on over to part two of the series. As always, my friends, keep wrenching. Mm -hmm.